Welcome to the Modern Assyrian program on ANB Sat. My name is Carmen Morad. My special guest today is Gilda Echtiar at MJC. She is a professor of the English language. <laughs> As an adult immigrant to the U.S., Gilda Ertiar personally experienced the challenges of learning English as a second language. In 1979, she came to the United States from her home country of Iran. A stay-at-home mom, she raised her two sons until 1984, at which time she decided to further her education. Hardly able to speak a word of English, she started attending her first official English learning class at CSU Stanislaus, a vocabulary class with her limited English language skills. She took that class very seriously and truly enjoyed it. It was this class, the only language class that she had ever taken, that encouraged her continued education. Already at a huge disadvantage with her deficiency in the English language, she was learning this new language in a new country as an adult, which to be perfectly honest was overwhelming at times. She could only understand the parts of the lessons that she had already studied in her high school classes in Iran. The rest of the subjects were new and difficult for her to understand. She was awarded a bachelor's degree in business with a concentration in accounting and graduated cum laude in the spring of 1994. She went back to CSU Stanislaus to work on her teaching credentials and in 2002, she received her multiple subject credentials with CLAD. Degrees in hand, teaching career began at Turlock Adult School with an English second language class in 1998. In 2003, she took her newfound love of teaching to Modesto Junior College and taught ESL. In the fall of 2010, she returned to her alma mater, CSU Stanislaus, to complete her master's in TESOL. In fall of 2011, she received her TESOL certificate, and in May 2012, she graduated with a master's in English with distinction. Welcome, Gilda. Thank you very much, Carmen. Thank you for taking time out of your busy schedule. Sure. We are in your classroom where you teach. Yes. You're a professor. And uh, you and I have had opportunities to talk about the wonderful work that you do, the mentorship you provide. Um, but before we get to that, Gilda, tell us a little bit about you. Tell us a little bit for our viewers to know and get to know you a little bit better. OK. Thank you, Carmen, for giving me this opportunity to uh, be on your program. Uh, as you said, my name is Gilda Ektiar, and I came to this country in 1979. Very young uh, person uh, with little knowledge of uh, English. I came here with my husband and two sons, and uh, I was a stay-at-home mom, uh, but uh, pretty soon I became tired of that. And I thought that I need, if I am in this land of opportunity, mm -hmm. I need to do something about myself. So I uh, started taking some, uh, one English class, in fact, it was a vocabulary with my limited knowledge of English. <laughs> I started going to CSU Stanislaus and taking this class and I loved it. I loved uh, the teacher, Dr. Cetera, and the program that he had. And that really inspired me. I said, you know what? I think I can do it. So I started uh, going back to school. In fact, I passed the TOEFL. I didn't go to ESL classes like ESL classes that MJC has, which are wonderful. And now I regret why I didn't do that. But I uh, took the TOEFL. And uh, since I passed it first time, so I started going to the university and working towards my uh, degree. Uh, although because I had two kids at home, I went as a uh, part-time student. Mm -hmm. I took only one class. So when I received my bachelor's degree, uh, it took me nine years to get my bachelor's degree because I was just taking one class at a time. I see. But I never stopped. It was a very hard road, in fact, uh, 
there were many times that I would not understand the teacher, what he or she is saying. And I had to take a tape recorder to record mm -hmm. the teacher. And three hours in the classroom, three hours at home, and then still using dictionaries and all that. But to make the story short, uh, I continued my education, got my bachelor's degree in uh, business administration with a concentration in accounting. And I started to uh, look for a job, but I am a people's person. Mm -hmm. uh, even though I graduated with accounting degree and I was doing my husband's uh, books in our business, mm -hmm. I didn't like it. So, <laughs> uh, yeah. So I uh, started talking with people and uh, I came with this idea of teaching because I really love teaching and uh, especially helping people who are in my situation, who were in my situation. So I started going back to school uh, and uh, I got my uh, credentials in multiple subjects. And uh, from there, I started my teaching career and I started with a, being a substitute teacher for all these uh, school areas that we have in this uh, uh, county. And uh, at one time, I was a substitute teacher for citizenship class in Turlock Adult School, and I loved working with adults. So uh, there you go. And two years after I started working for Turlock Adult School, I got a job at MJC to teach ESL, which was my dream job. <laughs> and after I started teaching, then again, I am a lifelong learner. My, my uh, going to school is never going to stop. So I went back again and worked on my master's. And 2012, I got my master's in English with concentration in TESOL, which is for ESL students. And I graduated with distinction. So Congratulations. Uh, yeah, thank you. <laughs> so that's my story. And I'm here teaching. Gilda, what an inspiration. Thank you. What a uh, lovely story because uh, I'm sure a lot of our viewers watching will relate to what you said, your honesty, your candor about the challenges, the fact that it took you longer because you had other responsibilities. And as mothers and as, as young women, we balance our family life. but. For you to continue with your professional dream that you had, what motivated you to keep going? Because I know it's not easy. A lot of us are in the same shoes. Yeah, especially if, as you uh, mentioned about uh, being a woman. It's a very difficult uh, uh, responsibility to have. You are a woman, you are a mom, you are a wife. So it was really a lot of struggle. But the thing that motivated me, it was my dream. Uh, whenever I have a dream and I want to get somewhere, I have to reach that dream. So that's what I always also tell my students. Mm -hmm. Dream a dream and don't stop no matter what. It's not an easy ro road. It's a bumpy road. It's a lifelong journey, but it's doable. And I always tell them, if I did it, you can do it too. So that's the first thing that motivates me, really, that uh, to continue. The second thing that is really keeping me going are my students. Uh -huh. When I see them, they are keeping me in the corridors and say, you know what, I'm graduating, I'm transferring to the university. Or I, I see them and I say, what grade are you now? I say, I'm in English 101. And I say, wow, you started with nothing, with nothing, knowing no more uh, than I did. So anyway, uh, that's uh, another thing. Then uh, when I see my students, in fact, yesterday, one of the students came and said, can you help me with the uh, teaching uh, test that I'm going to take? I said, what kind of teaching test? He said, see best. And I uh, kind of helped him to go to the university and take a classes. But that, I said, you know what? I want to become a TESOL teacher like you. Aww. And that really inspires me when I see this kind of students. I have a student, uh, I gave them an essay. Uh, and I said, uh, who do you admire? And the student gave me a paper with me being her role model and admiring me. That's outstanding. These are all give me inspiration. So I'm instrumental in somebody's life. And then when I see them successful, that's the best thing that I can 
dream about and I love my job so that's what inspires that's, me. That's an outstanding story. Thank you. I, I noticed in the beginning when we started and when you were telling me about uh, how you started you mentioned the name of your teacher. Yeah. And being a teacher plays an instrumental role. You become their mentor. They spend time with you. You, you become not just their teacher in a, a sense, but mentorship is so important. It is. Especially, Gilda, for the students that you have that are English learners, uh, for coming from a different country, a different culture, uh, a, a different way of life. Tell me a little bit more about uh, what you are a big part of about the English language learner program at MJC. Uh, in here we have two different uh, kind of programs. Uh, usually when you come to this country, you come as a refugee or however you come to this country, you don't speak the language. Mm -hmm. So the first thing you need is you need the basic English to get uh, around to go to doctors, to find a job, to be able to communicate with uh, teachers of your children. Mm -hmm. So that's a non-credit program and we call it uh, English for Work and Life. Uh, we have six classes that uh, students come and take those classes. They are uh, uh, three hours a, a day, for five day uh, four days a week. So that's the English, we call them ELW. And the second uh, section, when they finish that 906, which is the last level of the ELW English for uh, uh, life and work, then they uh, move to uh, this kind of a classes that we call them ELIC. Uh, used to be ESL, but now everybody speaks more than one language, so it's not the second language that I they see. are learning. That's why we have changed, and it's called ELIC, English for uh, college. Uh, for education in college and uh, they have just changed those uh, programs these are more uh, of a um, how do you say it more of um, educational program is not that you needed to speak to people or go to a doctor or things more like academic. that more academic in fact mm -hmm. I was the word that was the word that <laughs> I was looking for so yeah, more, they are more academic and after they finish those classes, then they can go to English classes and after that it's up to them if they want to transfer, which most of them do, and especially women. When I see women, are because I am a really a person who advocates for women, empowerment of women, especially countries that uh, in Middle East uh, women mm -hmm. have not many opportunities to go and become educated. And when I see them that they are in those uh, classes and they are, mm, for example, I have one student from Afghanistan mm -hmm. and when she came to my class she didn't speak one word of English mm -hmm. and now she is sitting in ELIC 20 which is the composition and writing class. Wow. And she is doing a great job and she is really, she has a goal and she wants to become somebody. And that's what she told me. She told me when I came here, everybody said, no, you cannot do it. It's a woman, you are a woman, you have to take care of the family. But she is in the college and she is going forward. She is doing a great job. It's the American dream. It is the American dream. It is the American dream. And age doesn't play a role. Uh, some of us come to this country at an early age. We learn quickly. Uh, and as you mentioned, those of us who have dreams and aspirations, we have our family to raise, which is just as important. But our dream never dies. Exactly. Especially when you are coming uh, as an adult to this country, Learning a language is another thing that you have to struggle with because as an adult you already have the knowledge and uh, ability in your own language and you want to learn a new language, it's become really difficult. So you need to study. And being a woman is not easy because you have mm -hmm. to take care of your children, you have to take care of your home, husband and everything. Mm -hmm. But if you want it, you can do it. And you can do it. Can and do I it. always tell them, if you see me, here, this is, I was you, and mm -hmm. I am you. So if you have a dream, do not stop. Nobody can stop you. 
That's beautiful, Gilda. Thank you. And, and as you are not just a teacher but a mentor, you also come in contact with a lot of your students that are struggling. Because if we can put ourselves in the shoes uh, of someone who comes to a new country, doesn't speak the language, it limits a lot of their activities and socialization, their professional aspirations, and uh, that causes some issues for them for their well-being as well, for their mental health, for example. There's a lot of depression and anxiety yeah. when it comes to people that are trying to acculturate, and they find it difficult. Um, you are the co-chair of the Assyrian Wellness Collaborative uh, in partnership with Stanislaus County. Uh, your unique role as, uh, as an instructor, as a mentor, how do you find that you can become instrumental in a way to help them with their well-being as well? Becoming educated. That's the, that's the only way that you can overcome all your problems. This is my belief. Mm -hmm. If you are educated, the doors are open for you. You can find a job. Nobody can force you to do whatever you, you don't want to do. And uh, you have a voice. This is very important. And depression goes away when you have a job. You can speak the language. Mm -hmm. And you have no uh, limitation. Uh, that's empowerment. And that's how they can overcome their problems. Mm -hmm. So that's what I always do, especially for women students. I pay a specific attention to them to make them that they understand in this country they can be whoever they want to be and the doors are open the sky is uh, the, the limit. limit so they can do whatever they want to do and that's the only way that you can overcome your uh, other difficulties in your life just imagine if you don't have a job you have to stay home uh, just cook, wash, and clean, and watch TV. That's what, ki what kind of life is that? But when you are educated, you are able to read, you can communicate with people, you can become part of the community, and also you become uh, acculturated to this mm -hmm. culture. You become part of this community. So for me, education is very important, plays an important role, and that's what I always believe in. It's a great message, uh, Gilda. In fact, uh, we have worked on a few programs together. Um, we have also been in touch with administration here. They are extremely happy with the work you do. Uh, MJC plays a big role in, in the Assyrian community, as you know, in Modesto, Turlock, for our viewers to know. Uh, a lot of the newcomers, they enroll here exactly. and, and in adult school to get on their way to start the baby steps as we call them so that they can take leaps like you have and to see that they can do it uh, if they can smallify it if they can take the small steps and come into a classroom to be motivated by someone who was in their shoes and who is from a country or very close to the culture that they are from uh, it makes it doable it, they can relate exactly they always see me as themselves. I am the mirror image of them. And I always, the first day of the class, when I open my class, the first thing that I tell them, I say, I came just like you. Mm -hmm. I sat on those chairs. I cried. I couldn't understand the teacher. I bought, oh. I had to uh, every, translate every word from Farsi, and from English to Farsi and write it in my book. I still have my psychology book. The whole book is read written in red in Farsi, mm -hmm. because I didn't understand. And by the way, that was the mistake I took. My first class was psychology. <laughs> Very difficult. <laughs> Even Farsi dictionary, the, mean, the definitions were not the same. So I had mm -hmm. to buy a psychological uh, dictionary, specific, special uh, dictionary. But uh, yeah, uh, you can do it. That's Let's what I tell that. them. I, I went through all these steps that you are going and I know how you feel. I had to take people to translate for me in a doctor's office. I had to go uh, take my husband with me for the teacher conference and always tell him what, it, what she says, what, how, is the, uh, how is my son is doing. 
I became tired of it. Mm. So that's what I tell them. I always tell them my story. And I say, don't, don't feel bad. It's OK. You don't speak the language, but the mentality, the knowledge is there. You have other knowledge in your own language. You might have accent because you came here as an adult, and that doesn't go away because of the muscles that you have. You cannot uh, speak perfect with perfect accent. But the knowledge is in here. Mm -hmm. When I came here, I didn't speak the language, but I always helped my children with their schooling. And even though I didn't know, I had to ask them, what is the meaning of this? But I would sit and work with them. Mm -hmm. Go to their school and help with the ladies' uh, moms. The PTA. The PTA. Once a week, we had to go and make uh, hamburgers. I didn't speak the language. I didn't understand what they are saying. And I had to say, <laughs> what did you say? <laughs> but that's what I'm telling them. Mm -hmm. This is my story. So don't be discouraged. But the only thing is, you should not let anybody to tell you that you cannot do it. Mm. If you have a dream, dream the dream and uh, follow it. That's my suggestion to my students. And every student and a lot of the Assyrians that might be watching that have been here for 10, 20, 30 years, they will relate to your story. Yes. Whether they share it or not, but what I appreciate about your honesty, Gilda, is that you have shared that when you've spoken at different events that we've had at yes. conferences, especially for refugee women. When we say refugee women, we're not calling them refugees. It's simply a status that they have at the time. But we have so many opportunities. We are so blessed to live in a country that, that is so different than the countries we come from. The culture is wonderful. We preserve the culture. We enjoy it. Uh, in fact, for the newcomers, preserving their culture is what keeps them going, especially the uh, Iranian, Assyrian, and Afghani student. Tell me a little bit about what's the demographics of your students right now? Well, right now, most of my students are either from uh, Afghanistan. A lot of them, in fact, are from Afghanistan. Mm -hmm. uh, few uh, people from Mexico, not many. And a lot of people from Arabic countries, oh, okay. uh, Syria, uh, Iraq, and all those. And uh, that's what I tell them. I say, do not forget your culture. Mm -hmm. But also try to mix with this culture. Keep your culture. I did. I kept my culture. In fact, I spoke Assyrian at home, even though my kids were cheating on me and <laughs> trying to turn it into English. But we kept the culture. And I told them, we are coming from that culture. And the rules in my house were the old culture, were not American culture. Mm -hmm. But I tell them, so keep your culture. But do not just isolate yourselves. Become part of the community. Go become involved. Go talk to people. Learn the language. Be part of this community. Nobody is going to take away your culture from you. Keep right. it, but be part of the community. That's right. Yeah. It's, it's what we always talk about, preservation and advancement. Exactly. When we talk about advancement, meaning that we can advance ourselves, we can achieve what it is that, that we have as a goal, might take us a little bit longer. Uh, we might be a little bit older than other students in the classrooms, exactly. as I am finding. But uh, it's so important to hear it from the teachers. Uh, I've talked to teachers like Lindsay Bird in high schools. Um, you are at a Modesto Junior College and, of course, adult school with older students. But there are also teenagers and kids that come to this country. I experienced it as a kid where I also remember my first ESL teacher. Oh. I will always remember her because she was my link to learning, to pronouncing. I learned this language. I was not born with learning to speak English. So, but then again, as you said, at home, we spoke Assyrian. There right? you go. <laughs> so it all goes to teach us about uh, balancing uh, as a mother, uh, as a person, as anyone of any age. We have to maintain our culture. It's, it's what we have. It's, it's who it we are. Exactly. It's our identity. So, um, you know, when I was at the county, we worked together on a few projects. And uh, they want to relate to people. When we tell them that 
even you're struggling, it's okay. You're not the only one. You're not alone. Exactly. Look at all the people that are there to help you in your journey. You have the Gildas. You have other teachers that share their story that really care about your well-being, about your accomplishment and your achievements. In fact, when we were working together at the uh, Assyrian Wellness Collaborative, you know that, you mm -hmm. remember, I, I, in fact, uh, at that time you were with the behavioral uh, health and mm -hmm. I had students who were in depression, had problems, family yes. problems, and I told them, I know a person that can help you. She has all these resources and I ask you for your telephone number if I can give it. Mm -hmm. So um, we, it is important to have yes. this kind of organization in our uh, society, our mm -hmm. community, because we are the point of contact with these people yes. when they come to this country. They don't know anything about things. Yeah. Uh, when was it? A few days ago, in fact, we were talking about uh, you cannot have a bottle of uh, uh, alcoholic uh, beverages open in your car and some of my Afghani students were looking at each other and saying, what's she talking about? So they don't know and they, where do they learn them? They learn them from these kind of subjects that they come up during the lessons or mm -hmm. during uh, the conversations and things like that. Mm -hmm. But keeping the culture is very important. That's what I tell them and I tell them you are just like a salad. This country is like a salad bowl. We have different cultures and that's makes it that's what makes it delicious. <laughs> <laughs> it's very true. And especially uh, us Assyrians living in countries where we always did preserve. So we're used to it. Yes. We're used to coming from Iran, Iraq, Syria, and Turkey and all those countries where our language was our primary language, but we also spoke another language. So we're used to it, but I think in this country it's easier to blend in and assimilate. Exactly. So uh, when I was talking to Ruth from, uh, from administration, she said, Carmen, we love the idea of civic engagement because uh, if you want to be a productive member of society in this country, number one, you have to speak to, you have to learn to speak the language. Exactly. As you said, it doesn't have to be perfect English, but we need to be as independent as possible. That doesn't mean that you have to go talk to attorneys or you have to go to court. There are s circumstances where you will need translators, but imagine if you can be independent to, to take care of your own daily activities and, uh, and not need help. And as you said, the most important thing is to always learn. Always have a dictionary, always learn two, three words a week. Listen to the news. That's um, what I tell them, sorry to cut you, but <laughs> I tell them every day, when you are eating uh, breakfast, you have a cereal box, read the cereal box. Maybe one word you don't know there, and that's your vocabulary. Learn it. Great idea. I like that. Yeah. Any, anywhere you go, one, uh, one small word you see anywhere, you say, oh, this is a new word, so I have mm -hmm. to learn it. The best mm -hmm. thing is on the breakfast table, because most of the people have cereal. Mm -hmm. So that's, that's my suggestion to them. That's a wonderful suggestion. And you know, uh, when we, for example, came here, the internet wasn't what it is today. In exactly. fact, it didn't exist at that time. So there are more opportunities with technology to really, there's no excuses to learn. There's, it, it just has to be with you wanting it. And, uh, and um, thank you for being that mentor and that sure. teacher to so many. So, um, I'm really glad to have known you, Gilda. You've contributed you so much, so much to so many. You've been that teacher that you and I talked about. They talk about Gilda as being their teacher to not only teach them the language, but, but to motivate, to, to tell them that they can always reach for the stars and imagine um, those young women coming from those cultures that they've been so oppressed. It's very difficult. It I've is. spoken with quite a few of them. It is. Uh, they see the opportunities in this country, but they also know their boundaries and their limits. So it becomes quite a bit of a challenge for adjusting, for balancing, for those who are still single. Uh, I talked to a few young Assyrian women that they tell me they said, at home, I wear this hat, I'm an Assyrian girl, 
but at school and at work, my professionalism requires me to be more outgoing, to be more aggressive, because I have to survive professionally. Exactly. So that's part of the empowerment. Right now, we're talking about the first step. Exactly. The initial step. But uh, it is a wonderful story to know that uh, you have been there and you shared that with your students. And here you are, uh, not only with your professional achievement and accomplishment, but to pass it on. Um, one of the premise of this program, Gilda, is giving back to the community, uh, making sure that the Assyrian community, regardless of where they live, whether it's here in Modesto, Turlock in the United States, or any other country, more Assyrians now live in diaspora uh, outside their homeland than where we come from. Exactly. That means adjustment, that means acculturation, it means learning whether it's in Sweden, whether they're in France, whether they're in other countries. So we are very good at it, that's why we have survived. Exactly, <laughs> exactly, and I think everybody's uh, almost the same. Uh, but you have to learn how to survive. And I think first step is you have to know the language. It no, doesn't matter where you live. It's not just the United States. It is wherever you go. I tell my students, if I come to Mexico, you are going to laugh at me because I don't know one word of uh, Spanish. But it's OK. If I live with you, I have to learn your language. Yes. Same goes with you. Yes. So just uh, don't stop at anything. Dream, believe in yourselves, and follow it. That's a beautiful story. Thank and, you. and the other thing, if I may add, is surround yourself with positive people. Exactly. That's the most important part of the message. You have to have positive people. That's what I tell them. So if you see somebody says, no, you are too old. No, you are a woman. <laughs> no, you have kids. Because that happened to me. Oh, now you have kids and you want to go back to school? And I say, yeah, I want to go back to school because this is my dream. Mm -hmm. So they, I'm sure they are feeling that pressure from negativity mm -hmm. from people around them. But I always tell them, just listen and follow your dream. Absolutely. Don't do anything Absolutely. else. Absolutely. In closing, Gilda, tell me what drives you every morning. When you get up to go to work, what is that, that component, that element in life that gets you going and gets you motivated to start your day? Love of my job. Oh. I love my job. I love working with people. When I, as I said, when I see my students, they are successful. That always gives me kind of, wow, I did something for these people. When I see my students, I'm saying something and I see their faces are kind of, Oh, they don't understand. Mm -hmm. But when they see something and they understand it, the, there is a light in their eyes, the aha moment. Yes. All these are for me the best things uh, that uh, motivates me. I love helping people, especially for women. Uh, I really root for women. Uh, I want them to see, to see them that they get somewhere and they are successful in their lives, not just I, I'm not saying being at home or being a mom is a bad thing. I, mm -hmm. I am and I was a mom and my, my kids are grown up now. But I was that kind of a woman that I had to cook, clean and take care of the kids and go to school with them and be, uh, participate in everything with, with my kids. But that did not stop me. It, it's not a bad thing to be a mom and a wife. It's natural. It's natural yeah. for us. But at the same time, you can do other things. You know, we are women and we can juggle all these <laughs> responsibilities to, to uh, in yes, life. We can. So, yeah, yes, we can. Yes, we can. <laughs> <laughs> that yeah. is a great message, Thank Gilda. You. Thank you so much. In closing, is there anything you would like to share with our viewers or any potential students or former students that you have? Please feel free to look at that camera and share your message. <laughs> my, my message is that no matter what, if you have a dream, follow your dream. I am you. I was you. I came to this country with no language, with no knowledge of the language, but I did not stop at anything. I had many moments that people were negative in my life and were kind of laughing at me. 
but I had a dream, a goal. Then you have a goal, do not stop at that. So please follow your dreams. This is a country that you have the opportunity for anything you want to be. You cannot be a president, but you can be anybody you want to be. So please uh, follow your dreams and do not stop at anything. Thank you so much, Thank Gilda. You. In closing, uh, this concludes our interview with Gilda Ikhtiar at MJC. Join us next time on The Modern Assyrian.